I'm, uh, I'm really honored and privileged to, to be here today. Um, I have a bad habit of just kind of showing up at, uh, at my life and not having a lot of time to process things and think about them before they just arrive. Um, and I got here and I was like, wow, this is, this is really crazy. This is kind of a, a big deal. Um, <laughs> my, um, my mom and dad always uh, worked really hard to, um, well, for me and my sister in particular, we had more of a problem of um, overconfidence than underconfidence. And they always tried to keep our egos in check um, and make sure that we never thought we were too much of a big deal. And you just completely undone all their years of, of hard work. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm, I'm honored to accept this leadership award, um, but all I can really say about leadership is um, that my own experience hasn't been terribly sophisticated or calculated. Um, I've mostly been making it up as I go along um, and being absolutely without a map. Uh, but maplessness is a state I'm pretty comfortable in um, nowadays because while I don't have all the answers ahead of time, um, I do feel that I have the, the mental software uh, to navigate the path ahead as it comes, um, even when it's sometimes dimly lit. Uh, and that's in large part from having been privileged uh, enough to have exercised my own human right to education um, before and during the time that I've been advocating for, uh, for the rights of Afghans to education. Um, when my sister and I were kids, we often used to compose songs and, uh, and then plan out living room concerts to perform them for our family. Um, and uh, we would belt out these melodramatic uh, ballads in the style of Celine Dion. And uh, in one of these concerts, I, I remember afterwards, you know, we kind of bowed and sat back and waited for the reaction. And my mom was clapping politely but had this very strained look on her face. Uh, but my dad just said, girls, stay in school. <laughs> and uh, so I did. Um, in fact, uh, <laughs> To excess, um, with our fairly generously funded higher education system here in Canada, um, they couldn't get rid of me after a decade uh, or a dozen years in, in three universities. Um, so I knew that I needed some solid training in light of the early failure of my singing career. Um, and it being Father's Day yesterday, I, I uh, thank my dad for his frank assessment of our musical talents and uh, making sure I had a, a plan B. Um, so this recognition from RRU is, is just really awesome and, uh, and a, a major bonus um, to the rewards that I get to experience in the field um, all the time. Every time I see a, a class full of teachers graduate, um, every time I set foot in a classroom in Afghanistan, um, and every time I, I watch a, a class full of, of women um, fixated on learning their, their letters and numbers, um, it's very powerful fuel. And it's all I'll ever need to, to keep going. Uh, but by recognizing my work, you also recognize these people too, uh, those I work for and with, the women and girls of Afghanistan, uh, who do the real heavy lifting when it comes to making the right to learn a reality. When I tell people I work in Afghanistan, um, I get this very um, familiar uh, response of kind of alarm sympathy. Um, and if I need something from them, like funding for our programs, I'll kind of indulge that a little bit. And uh, <laughs> short of any melodramatic singing about my trials and tribulations in the Hindu Kush. Um, but m normally I do point out that uh, there's no sacrifice or, or need for sympathy. I'm actually having a hell of a good time. Um, and not one moment of it so far has been dull. Um, Borden has always frightened me a lot more than, than burkas and bullets, and I've managed to assure myself against this threat, um, if not against the challenges that are inherent in uh, delivering educational programming in some of the, the dicier parts of the world. Um, but more importantly than, than keeping boredom at bay, it's been my great privilege to work alongside um, Afghan women and girls and to witness their courage, um, and, and to witness a country that just barely came back from the brink uh, and what it's been through in the last decade. And it's hard to tell from here sometimes uh, that things are actually getting better in Afghanistan. Uh, from women being part of the society again, just being visible, um, to uh, them joining, rejoining public life, to the more than three million girls that are back in school now in, um, in the public education system, to the vibrancy of the media and civil society, and the evolving democracy that's taking root um, in a country that I've come to think of not so much as my second home, but just as my other home. Um, it's a place that I am madly in love with, and it's taught me much. Uh, and I want to share with you one of the most important lessons that I've learned there. Uh, I think that sometimes we in the West have uh, a desire to preserve some exoticism in the world. Um, that makes us sometimes ignore the evidence, above all else, that we're human first, 
um, and that most societies hold more in common with each other than they hold apart, despite the distance between us. And so we can sometimes romanticize uh, cultures outside our own, and in doing so, the bitter experiences that, that are poverty, uh, hardship, um, uh, oppression, gender inequality, and the denial of basic rights uh, become quaint tribal characteristics rather than the horrors that, that they really are. And if we focus too much on the differences over the similarities, um, those voices in places far away from us are sometimes drowned out. Um, when they're telling us, perhaps inconveniently, I want the very same things that you do. Uh, there's a bad habit that's prevalent in some of the more privileged uh, parts of, of the world of thinking of things like women's rights, uh, like democracy, and, and the freedoms that come with those things as our values, when in fact where the front line for those values are today, where people are literally dying for those values, uh, is in places like Afghanistan, in Iran, in Syria, in Zimbabwe, in Yemen, and in our comfort here in Canada, in our freedom, and in our privilege, we have occasionally forgotten that good governance, that rights were not given, they were taken, and now it's the turn of others to take theirs. So with this award, Royal Roads has um, expressed some agreement with me uh, on this point, one that I live and breathe by, that human rights are universal. Uh, and that they're blind to nationality, to ethnicity, to gender, to sexual orientation, to religion, and to culture. And in this way, your tribute is to those women and girls many thousands of miles away from us uh, who battle great odds to go to school uh, and to their teachers, parents, and advocates who stand unshakably behind them. Rural Roads is a globally oriented place of learning, and this recognition is, is thus a fitting tribute uh, to their brave pursuit of education, uh, and a wager that their education will yield huge dividends uh, to these girls and women as individuals, uh, but also to the world at large, because we know now that the well-being of women and girls is tied very closely to the well-being of states. Uh, one of the greatest investments that countries can make in reducing poverty, in gaining political stability, in improving health outcomes, is to invest in the learning of women and girls. Um, in Canada, very often discussions of global issues, um, whether they take place in, in a university classroom or in the media, um, or just uh, in conversations among friends, there's often someone who will voice that uh, view, but we have to deal with our own problems first. Uh, how can we justify efforts for people outside our borders uh, when we still have poverty, when we still have inequalities? Uh, they say, let's clean up our own backyard first. And I've never understood this kind of thinking because I see it as extremely tribalistic. Uh, just where is our backyard exactly? I think a good global citizen sees the whole world as their backyard, and an injustice anywhere takes place on our collective watch. So I commend Royal Roads on being a good global citizen uh, in the talk as well as in the walk. And I'd like to convey my gratitude for the opportunity to have studied on this beautiful campus, uh, for the friendships I made here, uh, and for this acknowledgement today. I'm, I'm truly humbled. Uh, and I'd also like to thank the Victoria chapter of Canadian Women for Women in Afghanistan, a very strong chapter in our network of, uh, of 12 chapters in the country, um, for all of the awareness raising they do, all of the fundraising they do, uh, and for their dedication and the leadership that they've demonstrated in their communities to the cause of the human right to education. So some of our chapter members are actually here today. Um, there's uh, uh, Ruth, she's there, yeah, and Ashil. So you can wave, so if you have questions, uh, you can ask them. And uh, Catherine and Pauline here, um, uh, they are the, the engine that, that runs the organization, the, the volunteer, volunteers who do so much of the work. Um, and they have a very busy few months ahead of them uh, because our annual general meeting and annual symposium on, uh, on education in Afghanistan, which is always hosted in a different city in Canada, is going to be in Victoria this year in October. Um, so if we're lucky, maybe we'll see some of you there. Uh, and I also have to give thanks to um, my, my colleagues at Women for Women in Afghanistan and, and in Canada, um, and to all of our volunteers from, from coast to coast. They're a force of nature, and they're the heart and soul of an organization um, that I've actually literally grown up in, um, given that I've spent about half my life uh, in this organization by now. Um, 
and I've been surrounded always by these incredible women, men, and youth who, who make up the, the organization and, uh, and by their wisdom and, and wit. Uh, and finally, I'd like to thank all of you for gathering and, uh, today and sharing this special occasion and just for giving me a, a chance to stop and smell the roses um, and for my, my ego to balloon a little bit. Um, and, uh, and for a few moments, I'll enjoy that before I get back to the, the bumbling uh, task of, of navigating without a map. Um, and most of all, thank you for your exemplary global citizenship. Uh, so keep at it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.